volunteer ambulances, your volunteer fire departments, and you'll see why as we go along. Maybe. Okay, this is the Bakken. This is what uh, uh, that the uh, State Industrial Commission has got a map out. This is where Montreal County is located, and right now the uh, the hot the hot spot or the kitchen, as they like to call it, is down by partial. Montreal County is very is willing to. We have 1,600 miles of uh, county township roads. We're about the eighth largest county in the state. Our population in 2000 was 6,631. And the 2010 population, they figure, were probably maybe just over 7,000 people. That's by the U uh, official U.S. Census. So uh, <clears throat> I get news for you. Any, any, we're close. <coughs> Okay, one of the things the state's a little, uh, it takes time to get reports in, so the rig count that I have is for the weekend of 1226. 197 rigs drilling in uh, the state of North Dakota. You'll notice that we, we're, we're down, we're, we're down to 28 rigs in Montreal County. Mackenzie County and Gene and his people are dealing with a tremendous amount of activity. The thing that is amazing about this is each one of those wells, when you look at it, there's 2,000 truck loads, 2,000 semi trucks have come to that spot and left that spot to be able to scrape the ground, spud the well, drill the well, and start hauling off the well when, or the equipment when it's done. That does not include all the truck traffic you're going to see for hauling the oil out of the well. And some of these wells in Montreal County are extremely uh, productive. Um, if they're not 1,200 barrels a day, they get kind of disappointed. The big companies that we have drilling in Montreal County is uh, EOG, Hess Corporation, Whiting Oil. The fourth one you'll notice is a co company called Brigham. Not that this is going to be a long-lasting play or anything, but the National Norwegian Oil Company, State Oil, has purchased Brigham's interest and bought out Brigham. So one of the things it shows compared to some of the past oil, uh, oil cycles is there's uh, a, lot, a lot of longevity in this. The other issue that comes up is the success rate on the wells in the bottom field is uh, right around 99%, 100%. If they can't get a well up for production, it's because something they moved up either during the fracking or during uh, some of the retooling. As so of October 31st, state of North Dakota had just about 7,000 wells. Montreal County had 1,031 oil producing wells. Now keep back in the back of your mind, that's 2,000 truckloads for every one of those wells. There's 74 what we call idle wells. They're waiting for fracking or they're waiting for a uh, workover rig. And then the next one, the 41 saltwater disposal wells. These are the ones you have to be, kind of be careful of because that is going to be increased truck activity all the time because this is where they dispose of the water that comes up when they do the oil and gas production. So as a county commissioner, township supervisor, that's where a lot of your road damage is going to come in is because those trucks are always legal. To give you an idea of how rapidly things have changed, back in August of 2007, the state of North Dakota was producing 3.8 million, bar uh, million barrels of oil. In August 2011, it's 13 million, 13.8 million. That shows you how rapid the growth has gone. In Montreal County, back in 2007, we did 235,000 barrels. In August of 11, we did 4.2 million. Now, we're only talking a span of four years. That shows you how rapid this thing has hit. Um, and it's one of those things that we only would have known. If the state will only have enough common sense to slow down the number of oil permits that they put out per month. 5% uh, oil production tax. You'll hear about all the money that comes back to oil country. I want to let you in on some inside stuff. The state collected $501 million. $181 million of that came from uh, Montreal County. And the state allocated back to Montreal County $20 million. Of that $20 million, the city's got three and a half million for because the cities are you, you're going to have a lot of impact on your infrastructure and other things. Uh, just about ten million came back for our county general fund, and our commissioners have determined that any oil money that comes back, sixty percent of it automatically goes to the road and bridge fund to try and maintain the roads. 
The schools got 1.6 million. Our other infrastructure got uh, 5.2 million. Then that's 20 million out of the 501 million. The six, and now that's one tax. This is a separate tax. This is a six and a half percent oil extraction tax. And from the state back 2008, 2009, we collected 184 million. 2010, it was 521 million. Collections in Montreal County, I kind of cheated on the last one. We really didn't do 521, but we did up 37 uh, percent of that. So uh, the, the other thing that you get from oil country is you get uh, some money back for federal leases uh, under, in this case, under Lake Scott and we up. And you'll notice the amounts have gone down, but that's because some of the uh, activity has gone down because the leases have been taken up. But the 20 million that the state got in 2011, Montreal County, the state kept, kept half. Montreal County got 258,000 out of that. But here again, the county allocates mostly back to uh, uh, road work. In addition to this, in Montreal County, the state of North Dakota owns approximately 100,000 mineral acres. So this is kind of a unique thing if you stop to think about it. They get five and a half of the five percent tax. They get the six and a half percent tax, and then they're the, they're the royalty owners, so they also get 100 percent of the royalty from that one that they have. There's a little bit of money going in the state. Commissioner uh, uh, Moshe re referred to some of this. These are some of our roles. If we rebuild the gravel road, and these numbers, by the way, were are now out of figure or out of date because of the gravel situation we're running into, it cost three hundred thousand dollars just to gravel the road, or three hundred thousand a mile to rebuild the gravel road. If you wanted to repave, which we're kind of at, that, that figure is right around a million dollars a mile, and then just the plain gravel was thirty-six hundred dollars. Now I want to thank the state because they did give us an extra 40, $49 million to work on our, all the roads in Montreal County. And so we're doing some paving projects. And at a million dollars a mile, guess what? We're not doing a lot of paving. One of the other things that your county commissioners will come to really love to hear, and that's called dust control. And some places in the other east, they don't have a problem because the roads are paved. The dust, we had actually dust control requests in January of this year because of all the trucks up and down the road. It creates such a haze um, that you have a difficulty seeing. Commissioner uh, Boucher referred to some of our roads and how they drive on them when they're wet. You can see the effects that this has on these roads. This is a regular travel township road. This isn't just a hurry trail. We had some snow issues last year. We had a we, what little pavement we did have in Montreal County, they started having blowouts. And so they would just uh, keep driving on. You can see the patch behind it. Uh, finally, this road is actually what we call our Pelham South Road that we actually ground it down, ground the pavement off. Then here's a guy going down the road thinking, this isn't such a bad deal. We, we need to move this earth scraper. Doing wonders to the road, too. This is something that you, all everybody needs to be aware of, housing issues. You can't believe how greedy some people can get when they have an opportunity uh, to make some extra money. I'm sure the gentleman in the tent there, that, that has to be a free campground in, uh, by the city of Stanley. But otherwise, you're going to be looking at something like a man camp. EOG has a man camp north and east of Stanley, a 500 person man camp. Well run, they do an excellent job up there. The bigger man camps are actually a little bit easier to uh, work with because of the uh, professionalism of, of running the camps and dealing with them. So the size of the camps are, are, are the, these big ones that are run professionally run aren't too bad except you have a tremendous strain on your septic. There's all the sewage going. You have tremendous demand for water. You have demand for law enforcement services and medical, emergency medical services. And this is uh, just to give you an example, uh, Newtown, Stanley, Partial are the three largest cities in Montreal County. The next ten communities are all man camps. And then we have Pelham uh, Plaza and Ross. $160 a day, but at least this one includes meals. These are on the west end of Stanley, over $3,000 a month. Two guys live there, one on each end. 
You have a common kind of kitchen area in the middle. You can sleep in your truck at Cenex, and Cenex doesn't charge anything for that. And then in fact, the nice thing about Cenex is you can get a shower for 10 bucks, and then you get all your fast food service in there. Uh, if you go behind the uh, Cenex station in Stanley at night, you'll probably see somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 trucks of uh, people slipping back there. In the summertime, it's kind of nice. Those that are, have the flat pits, like the ones that are holding the pipe, they'll actually just have a tent up on top of their uh, flat pit just to get out from under, out of the truck. Brand new apartment house building in Stanley, uh, two bedroom, two bath, single stall garage, opened up at 1350 I believe they're just about $1,800 a month now. So of course that's, you, you pay all the utilities. This is across from high school in Stanley. We have, uh, the front one is now at $2,000 a month and the back one is $2,400 a month. The front one is two bedroom apartments, one bath, the back ones are two bedroom apartments, two baths. All right and uh, no garage or parking. This is what you need to watch out for. These are the man camps that pop up where someday I'll take five or ten acres and start setting it up so people can uh, just kind of set up their campers. Um, and these are ones that cause a little more difficulty because these guys come and go and they may leave in the middle of the night. Uh, domestic violence calls go up, uh, shootings, uh, reported shootings go up. Uh, they're tough. Not that they try to pack them close together. Or even the stage you have 14 feet between uh, between trailers. As you can see, that's that's happening here. Your impact on your schools, you gotta keep this in mind because when these people come, there's a lot of them come that like, like to bring their families. We have uh, Stanley, Newtown, Marshall are experiencing uh, things with the uh, no child or no child left behind English as a second language. We have a tremendous amount of Spanish-speaking uh, students now, because a lot of the pipeline companies that come up are coming out of Texas, and they're uh, very uh, heavy uh, into Hispanic uh, help. Stanley, Parshall, and Newtown school districts have their own houses. In Stanley, they just built two fourplexes. Uh, Newtown, I believe, or Parshall right now, has about six houses completed for their teachers. And Newtown has uh, a number of trailers and a number of houses for their teachers. The uh, reason that they're doing this is a teacher coming out of college cannot afford $2,000 a month in bare, in bare rent. These are some of the other issues that the emergency services need to be aware of. There are some environmental concerns. Oil spills do happen. This particular oil spill what happened is there was a pump malfunction and 300 barrels of crude oil leaked out onto the ground. And there's 42 gallons in a barrel. Kind of gives you an idea. They came in with the back trucks, vacuumed up as much as they could, then received permission from the State <coughs> Health Department to go fish and wildlife that we were able to burn the oil because you'll notice we're in a wetland area, which is a nesting area. This is another one. You got to be careful. You know, there's a lot of good things that go on with oil, but sometimes some of the subcontractors leave a little to be desired. You'll see the uh, backhoe up at the up by the tanks. Well, it kind of made a little hole, and it kind of leaked out a little bit, and leaked into the guy's field. This is not water, but he told the farmer that's okay because. Petroleum products are actually used in fertilizer, and so this will come back much cleaner. <laughs> he used to say when I talked to the actual oil company, no, that isn't what it is. They ended up coming in and digging all this dirt out and replacing the dirt. The infrastructure, Jeans will deal with this too. The infrastructure is unreal. City of Stanley uh, just finished a third sewer lagoon, and they still can't take outside the dump. Uh, City of Partial still is able to take a little bit. City of uh, Newtown completed a uh, remodel of their lagoon a few, a few uh, a year back, and uh, so they're able to take some. But you don't think about it, but when you start throwing up a 500 unit band camp, and there's toilets in there, that's bigger than all you know, three of our communities in Stanley. You know, where is it going to go? Because these guys don't have uh, lagoon systems yet. You know, just a little bit of traffic, and this is, uh, this is actually kind of slow, it's kind of picked up since then. 
the wild and the wacky. You're not going to believe what people who. Yeah. Have you noticed the, the bad conditions here? You know, the sky is cloudy. The road is dry. <laughs> but you were, you were so intense on using uh, texting while he was driving down the road that he had a little bit of a problem. This one I can understand. You know, it's a little icy. Here we go. We're back in the wide open again. Um, I think they should ban cell phones for truck drivers. Now this guy, although he was talking on the phone, he didn't kind of tip it over. He did pretty good, if you notice. He's only a little bit in the ditch. This is from the other side. <laughs> we had some uh, snow issues of trying to cut the roads. Okay, this is a production water truck that is tipped over. What happened is the driver of this truck was the second day on the job. They kind of pulled over on the gravel road to let another vehicle by and had kind of a false shoulder of snow. So he rolled it, dumped 60 barrels of what's called production water, salt water. It's got every uh, oil company has their own special, uh, special recipe for their drilling mud stuff. And that's going into a watershed area where the aquifer is at 60 feet. So this is, uh, these need to be looked out for. You notice this maintainer is kind of nice. You notice the maintainer is stuck. It's not a county maintainer, by the way. The oil companies do try and help, but sometimes their help isn't too well trained. That's a power line going through there. You know, they laid something on the surface because, you know, they just needed to get some power somewhere. Now, uh, here's, you know, you can easily understand this one. Is, there's ice on the road. This thing was actually kind of solid ice. You can kind of see where it came down and kind of spun out and went backwards. And then this is the truck that came to help him. <laughs> right? This is right on a, a drill site. You know, you've heard, you've heard talk about the pits where they put all the uh, fluids while they're drilling. Well, this guy must have thought he could drive through the pit. But that is a, a production water truck in the pit. Here and again, you know, those bad weather conditions will get in every time. <laughs> uh, Greg referred to the uh, number of employees. It's not only employees that you look at as for a county, it's also the cost of the equipment. That we've got uh, from seven blades, there are up to 14 blades. One goes or one dust control truck. I believe they've just picked up another front end loader. Um, and they still can't keep up with all the work. Here's a uh, my closing slide is, this is just an investment. What North Dakota gets out of Montreal County? And believe me, Montreal County doesn't want all the money. It just would like, you know, a little bit of a share. But the state, uh, through all its total taxes, gets $1.2 billion in collections. $432 million of that comes from Montreal County. $52 million comes back to Montreal County from the state. So, we're, uh, Montreal County is roughly 34% of the state's total production. So if you do your uh, return on investment, if I was a businessman, this is my kind of investment. The return on investment is 1,363% from the state of North Dakota. So when you hear about all the money coming back to oil country, take it with a grain of salt. And what I'll do is I'll hold off on questions and we'll let Gene take over because a lot of the things that I've just gone through kind of impacts what Gene's going to do.